Simon says subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. Before we begin, it's important to understand spills and arrays because this is probably going to be new terminology for you. In Excel, formulas that return multiple values will spill these values directly onto the worksheet. Now that might not make too much sense to you at the moment, so let's take a look at a couple of examples. So I'm going to show you an example of just a regular formula first of all, or a standard formula. So in this first little table, we have some employee names. And what I want to do is I'm just going to return their department from this little table that we have over on the right hand side. So what I could do here is just a very simple VLOOKUP. So we're going to type equals VLOOKUP. Our lookup value is going to be the employee name. We're going to look up that value in this table over here. And you can see that because I've named my table employee location, that's what I'm getting in the formula as opposed to the cell references. I need to provide the column index number. So what information do I want to return? Well, I want to return the department, which is column number two. And am I doing an approximate or an exact match of the lookup value, the employee name? Well, I'm doing an exact match, so I can put zero or false on the end here. So I'm just going to go with zero. Let's close the bracket and hit enter and it pulls back IT as the department. And what I can do here is just drag this down to fill out those other departments for the rest of the employees. Now, this is what we call a standard Excel formula. When we construct it, the answer just appears in one cell. And if we want to copy that to other cells, we have to use our fill handle or other methods in Excel in order to do that. Dynamic array formulas work in a very different way, which you're going to see in a moment. Before we get on to that, let's just take a look at one other type of formula, and that is a CSE array. And this might be something that you're already aware of. The CSE part stands for Control Shift Enter because it's always been in Excel, if we want to perform multiple calculations within one formula, we need to press Control Shift Enter to make that into an array formula. And this is something that historically many people have found quite confusing. So let's have a look at a CSE array so you can understand exactly what they do if you're not sure. Now in this little table, we just have again some basic products. We have the quantity that's been sold and we have the price of each of those products. So if I want to find out what the overall total is of all of the products, this would involve two different calculations because I need to multiply the quantity by the price for the first product and I need to do that for all of these different products and then I need to do a sum calculation to add up all of those totals. Now we could do this calculation all in one go using a CSE array. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to say equals sum and all I would need to do is select all of the quantities multiplied by all of the prices. Now, in order to get this to work and to calculate correctly, we would need to make this a CSE array, which means we need to press Control Shift Enter and not just Enter. So let's do that. Control Shift Enter and we get our total. So CSE Control Shift Enter allows us to combine multiple calculations in one formula. And another thing with these CSE arrays, you can always tell if you do have a CSE formula, because if you look at the formula bar, you'll notice that your formula is encased in these curly brackets. So that tells you that it's an array formula. Now, bear in mind, both of these examples that we've looked at, this is going to give you a better understanding of how spills work with dynamic arrays. And what I'm going to show you is a very basic example of a filter dynamic array. Now, I am going to move through this section fairly quickly, but don't worry if you're not really understanding what I'm doing, because we do have an entire lesson dedicated to this filter function a bit later on. And we'll go through it slowly and we'll break it down. Really, what I'm trying to get you to understand in this lesson is just the concept of how spills work. So what we're going to do is we're going to return the employee, the department and the block from this table 
depending on what we have selected in column K. So we're going to use one of the new dynamic array formulas, and that is filter. So let's type it in. We need to select our array, which is going to be everything in this table. And then I need to tell Excel what I want to include. So I'm just going to filter for all of the employees in the marketing department. So we're going to select the department array and that has to equal what we have in cell K4. And that's all I'm going to do. There are lots of other things we can do with filter and lots of other arguments we can use. But just for this basic example, let's close off our bracket and hit enter. Notice the results spill into multiple cells. So I don't just have one formula in one cell like I did when I was doing the VLOOKUP. And this is effectively a CSC array because I'm performing multiple calculations in one formula. And the results have spilled down into multiple cells. If I was to change this department to, let's say, sales and hit enter, those results will update. So everything is fully dynamic. And if we click in our results, notice that we get this blue border around the outside. This is effectively showing us what our spill range is. That is the terminology. And this spill range will expand and contract when necessary when new values are added or removed. So if I was to add another name to the bottom of this table, everything should update. So let's do that. I'm going to go down to the bottom here. Let's just add Adam, Lacey, and we're going to put him in sales. And what we should see is that this employees table will update. And there we go. He's added on to the end. Let's put him in the east block like so. Let's take a look at a couple of other examples of spills. I'm going to jump across to the spills worksheet and notice that we have a little table just here. And that's just listing out some first names and some last names of different employees. Now, notice that the first names are in lowercase and the last names are in what we call proper case. Now, I want everything in this first name column to be in proper case. And I also want to sort this list of names into alphabetical order A to Z. So the first thing I'm going to do here is put this data into a table, Control T. Let's click on OK. And I'm going to change the colors because those aren't particularly nice. Let's just change those to a purple color. Now I'm not going to name my table for this example. We'll just leave it on table two. And let's tidy up this data. So we're going to combine two things here. We're going to use another new dynamic array called sort by. And we're also going to make that first name column proper text. So let's type in proper as well. And we're going to select everything that we have in here. Close off our proper. I'm now back into my sort by formula. So I can choose which column I want to sort by. So I want to sort by the last name, comma, and do I want to sort in ascending or descending order? Well, I want to sort in ascending, close off sort by, hit enter. Now take a look at those results. It's converted that first name into proper case. The results have spilled across both columns and it's also sorted the list by the last name A to Z. Now, one other thing to notice is if you wanted to go in and edit this formula, if I click in a cell down here within the spill range, note the formula is kind of grayed out in the formula bar. You always must go to the first cell that contains the formula in order to edit it. Then you can double click and you can make your changes. Now, one other thing to note here is if I then wanted to do something like maybe a count on these names, let's type in count A. I'm going to select everything in this table. Notice what Excel does. Take a look at that notation. It's put a pound or a hash symbol in there. And what that basically tells us is that we're referencing a dynamic array. Now, if I was to press enter here, I'm going to get a result of 22 because it's counting each of these individual items. Now, that wouldn't be what I would want in this case. I just want to know how many members of staff we have. So I could go in here and I can do a divided by two. And that's going to give me the correct result of 11. Now, what about if I was to add more names to this table? 
And you'll notice at the bottom here, I just have a little list. So let's drag this up. And because our original data is in a table, that table is going to auto expand to accommodate those new names. But take a look at what's happened just here. We now have a spill error in column D. Now, why do we have that? If we click on it, take a look at the range. If you look at the blue lines around the outside, you can see that because I have another table underneath, there isn't enough room for these results to spill down. So this can easily be fixed simply by moving this table out of the way. So if we pick this up and let's just drag it over here, now I get my spill results. Also notice that my count has updated as well. So everything here is completely dynamic. So that's kind of how spills work. Hopefully you can now understand that and see the difference between just a standard formula, CSE arrays and dynamic arrays. This video is part of our complete set of courses for Excel 2021 and Excel 365. To take a look at our courses, click over there. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. And to see more Excel videos, click over there.